We're back out of the East Test area for one of the newer facilities here at Marshall. It's a new part of the Impact Testing Facility. This is the outdoor range where we've got some very large guns. We're joined by Andy Fincham with Impact Testing. I guess, Andy, first thing, could you tell us a little bit about exactly what Impact Testing is? Well, what we've been doing uh, for years at, with Impact Testing is trying to understand how materials perform mainly at hypervelocities, uh, micrometeoroids, orbital to be, that sort of thing. Well, after return to flight and uh, lost Columbia and trying to get a better understanding of how the materials perform at lower velocities on the scent, at, at the launch pad, these allow us to go from a few hundred feet per second to a few thousand feet per second up to, say, rifle velocity. Uh, and that's the first couple minutes of, of flight we got to characterize and better understand how our materials that we're using on flight can resist impact. And that's that's what we that's all that's all we're doing here. We're, we're supporting return to flight, understanding launch debris, uh, use the larger gun, same thing to understand characterize ice, foam impacts, ablator impacts, anything that can hit the vehicle we can shoot it and simulate an impact event. Now, of the three different areas that involve impacts testing, this is called the ballistic right. area, and it's at an outdoor range. Right. I mean, the guns themselves are housed indoors, but obviously there's a target downrange. Correct. Why is that? Well, the idea here is that we are able to shoot at full-scale hardware if need be. We can we can bring in um, a, a huge test panel, cryogenics, high pressure. Since we're out in the test area, this whole area is considered hazardous operations. So we can set out the panel out there, shoot it. If it blows up, nobody's hurt. We're we're in our own little area, but it's all protected, and uh, and that's ultimately the difference between these guns, along with the velocity. All the other guns are within a building, so we're sort of limited with the other with the with the size of the target. We can, you know, I mean, you know, up to up to full size hardware if we need to. We can put an external tank out there and shoot it if we needed to. <laughs> well, we're not going to shoot at anything that large today, but let's go ahead and fire one of these. All right, let's these, do these it. look fascinating. They're not your traditional revolvers or rifles, are they? No, no. These instead of using gunpowder, these use helium as a propellant. And the advantage there is is that we can actually dial in the pressure that we want to get the velocity that we need. So let's do it. All right, what's, what's, is this one we're going to be firing yeah, we're here? We're going to shoot the small, what we call the small ballistic gun. Uh, we're currently doing return to flight work with this, shooting uh, very small projectiles into plates to characterize those materials on launch. And, uh, and so we'll, we'll just uh, do a quick shot in this to show you what it's all about. Great. we're shooting into for this test is a half inch thick steel plate that's instrumented with three accelerometers and a load cell at each of the four corners so that the guys that are doing all the computer modeling can take the impact data, plug it into their models and make sure that, it, that, the, uh, that their models agree with the actual impact event. Okay, Andy, so the gun is, is loaded and ready to go. It's, it's pressurized. What are we going to shoot? Okay, what we're going to shoot is a sample of EA-934. It's an epoxy that's found all over the launch pad, and we're doing this to simulate launch debris. As if that might be hitting the shuttle on its way up. Correct. Sorry. Correct. Okay, I'll let you go to it then. All right. I have to be out here, right? Correct. I can't stand in there yes. with you. Safety well, first. I'm not going to stand in here either. I'm going to be out there, oh, Okay, great. Come on out there. Five, four, three... Two, one. All right, so Andy, you just shot the gun, and you just recovered the pieces of the projectile. Right. What happens is that we've, we've learned, or well, the modelers have told us, and we've learned by, by test, that the, the material will not fracture below 400 feet per second. But if we shoot right over 400 feet per second, it'll break into to big chunks. And the faster we go, the smaller the chunks are. I imagine sometimes it's hard to find those chunks. It's very difficult. i got a 1,000 square feet to look for these chunks. We've moved indoors to building 4612 here at Marshall and the original impact testing facility, where we're joined by Mary Hovatter, who's going to tell us about the largest and the oldest gun we have here. Marshall. Yes, that's correct. This gun is over 90 feet long, and this is the hypervelocity two-stage light gas gun. Um, this one was actually brought here in the early 60s, and it was used for various testing, including space station. Excellent. Well, why don't you go ahead and walk us through some of those different parts of it here? Sure, I can do that. At the end down here, you have your breach area. This is your action end. It's where your powder goes, and you have a piston.
in the white thing you see there. And once you fire this gun, it blows the powder, which moves your piston and compresses your gas, hence the light gas gun, it's hydrogen that's in this gun. Uh, the, it's compressed in this area until it reaches a certain PSI level, and it blows a disc, which gives us a certain velocity, and moves your projectile, or much like a bullet, has a jacket around it, moves that down this barrel, and your jacket is stripped away, and you have just a projectile in free flight from here on out. It moves down a flight tube here, and it goes all the way down until it gets to this area where your target will be sitting. This is where the impact happens. If you have very large targets, we can put them in our very large oh, chamber. That's a big tank. Right, right. And all this is evacuated just like space. Well, what kind of uh, targets do you use? Well, we have several if you'd like to look at them. All right. So this is one of the targets that uh, you guys shot at. It, it, it looks a little bit like styrofoam, but it's obviously not. What is this? Right, this is an aluminum foam. It was a concept that we used several years ago. Uh, we look for things that are a good energy absorber, and this happened to be a very good example of that. You can see where the projectile actually hit here, and if you turn it over, you can see where it did not penetrate the back surface. It never made it through, and how fast was it traveling? Seven kilometers a second. Unbelievable. What about this one we've got here? Uh, this is also a good example. Um, we use a Whipple Shield concept, which means we have several different layers in here. We have a first layer that's a sacrificial layer, and then we have different layers or even materials, depending on what, what the customer wants. Uh, and this would be an example of your interior wall of your spacecraft. Uh, so if a projectile comes in at 7 kilometers a second, it breaks up, and all these different layers or materials that happen to be in the middle absorb all that energy and do not allow it to penetrate the back wall. And if you look in between, you can see that. And what about the big one right here? Uh, the big one here was actually the fir one of the first ones that was shot uh, many, many years ago when Space Station Freedom first started. And you can see the very large hole uh, that was made with a projectile even smaller than what I have here. And how fast was it traveling to make that size of a hole? That's a huge hole. Right, that's a very large hole. That was going just almost seven kilometers a second. And you have to understand, too, this one had fabric and materials in front of it, but they obviously were not a very good energy absorber. Well, it's good we have these guns here to test it then. Exactly. Now, you have another gun here that, that's a lot shorter. Yes, we have a small gun that does exactly the same thing, but shoots very small projectiles. Let's go take a look at it. Okay. So this gun is essentially a smaller version of, of the big one you have here. Yes, that's correct. This is a very small two-stage light gas gun that simulates micro meteor debris. And we shoot one millimeter projectiles and smaller. That's really small. What, like the size of a grain of salt, maybe? Yes, that's and right. It even has a real trigger, too. Yes, it's a fun gun to shoot. <laughs> well, thanks for letting us into the indoor test range facility here. Well, no problem. We have one more. We have a water gun, if you want to go look at that. A water gun? Yes, that's right. Okay. So Mary brought us back out to the East Test area to visit the third lab of the impact testing facility and talk to Whitney Hubs. Whitney, you're going to show us this water cannon. That's what she called it, the water cannon. Actually, this uh, is a rain impact testing uh, facility. Uh, I will shoot uh, your sample, which is infrared uh, window, into a single raindrop at a known velocity, and we determine the damage on the materials. Oh, so you're not actually shooting water then? No, just a single raindrop. Okay, so the raindrop falls and the sample hits it. Correct. And you find out the effect it has. Right. Okay. Uh, the rain poses a serious uh, threat to missiles, to uh, aircraft components, spacecraft components. Like, you know, we're going to uh, create a new vehicle and we're going to need to test for that in adverse weather conditions. So really, that section is right here, but but why the long barrel that shoots off that way? That actually is just to slow the sample down after it's uh, been impacted by the raindrop where we don't do damage to the sample. All right. Can we shoot it? Sure. Excellent. Those aren't the typical kinds of guns we're used to seeing, but no. some pretty cool stuff. That's right, and that x-ray facility and the electron microscope, both a couple of great capabilities that we have out here at the center. See where we turn up next as we focus on Marshall.